Morning, we're just gonna give folks a few seconds to come in from the waiting room. As a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please mute yourself unless and until you are appearing or testifying before the board. We'll give a few more seconds to clear the waiting room. Great. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I am chair of the Boston Licensing Board and I'm pleased to be joined today by Commissioner Kiana Saxon and Commissioner Liam Curran. Thank you. And once again, as a reminder, please do mute yourself unless and until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on today's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant, who will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chairwoman and commissioners. Following the questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. Now calling item number one on this morning's agenda, Sell High Associates LLC doing business as McDonald's located at 500 Geneva Ave in Dorchester. Holder of a common vigiler license has petitioned to amend the closing hour of the licensed business from 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Chirag Selly here, one of the owners. Uh, Vijay Selly uh, is also on. He's one of the owners. Our director of operations, Luis Gonzalez, and our licensing member, uh, Madhu Goyal. And yeah. Great. You may go ahead and, and present your proposal. Yeah. So our proposal is to extend our hours of operation uh, for the closing hour of 11 o'clock to be till 12 o'clock. Um, and from the 11 to 12 time frame uh, for midnight, it would just be for delivery. Um, and we would service uh, just uh, drivers who are delivery drivers coming in for operation to extend hours to essentially provide more hours to the uh, local workers in that area. And then also increase business through a safe and secure platform of delivery. Great. I love it. I love Thank you. Any questions from the chairwoman or commissioners? Look at you. I don't have any questions. Uh, Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon? None for me. Thank you. At the moment. Thank you. Okay. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kevin Tran from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We host some butters meeting for the applicant on January 27th of 2022. We received no concerns from the community and the uh, Diffuse Corner Civic Association is in support for this project. At this time, our office would like to defer the judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling Thank you. item number two. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Calling item number two four five Boston LLC doing business as four five coffee roasters located at 200 State Street has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above kiosk in the lobby of 200 State Street with storage manager George Kalogianis, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? I am George Kalogianis. Good morning. Good morning. You may go ahead, Mr. Kalogianis. Yes, good morning. So uh, we recently met with the neighborhood council as well. Uh, we are looking to open our coffee shop in the lobby of the 200 State Street building. Um, it's a joint operation with car properties uh, meant to be part a uh, amenities uh, project for the building so that people in the building can come down and get coffee, but it is also open to the uh, public as well uh, to come in off the street. Uh, it's a small, it's a coffee kiosk, about uh, 150 to 200 square feet. We have eight seats available. If anyone would like to sit for a minute and you know drink their coffee, uh, we do have a back storage room as well, two back storage room. One is the prep area for uh, any grab and go items, uh, dishwasher, you know, uh, small oven as well. And then our storage closet, and then uh, just, you know, espresso machine, drip coffee, and uh, pastries uh, available in the uh, ki coffee kiosk. So, and we will be open from Sunday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
Thank you. Any questions from the chairwoman? No, thank you. I think you covered everything, um, every question I had. Commissioner Sachs or Commissioner Curran? None from me, thanks. None, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor President Flynn's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Yes, hi, good morning. Um, this is Okwan Kwan uh, from uh, uh, Virgin Atlantic uh, Lounge in uh, Logan Airport. We are, we are operating that lounge uh, from uh, Usually 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. right now. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Kwan, is this about the port number two on today's agenda, four or five coffee roasters? Uh, no, so uh, uh, airport lounge in Virgin Atlantic. Got it. We will be getting there um, later on the agenda. So we'll, okay. we'll be getting there. Great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not familiar no, with it. It's no the first worries. time for me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter, uh, number two, four, five, copy roasters? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number three, UMNV 240A Newbury LLC, located at 240A Newbury Street, holder of a common vitular seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Stacy Sue to Lori D. Schaefer, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thank you, Secretary Green. Ryan Gosda from McDermott, Quilty & Miller on behalf of the licensee. With me this morning is Lori Schaefer, who is the new proposed manager of record at Cafe Susu, which is the cafe inside suit supply on Newbury Street. Um, other than the new manager coming in to operate the cafe, there are no other operational changes proposed. She is a U.S. citizen, Massachusetts resident, is familiar with the rules and regulations regarding the sale of service of alcohol, and does have experience in the food and beverage industry. Um, but as I mentioned, she is on the call as well to the extent you have any questions. Thank you, Attorney Gazda. Um, is Lori, I just don't see Lori on my camera. Oh, there you are, Lori. Okay. I do see Lori Schaefer here. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I, there's no other changes besides the change of manager? Okay. All right. Um, I have no other questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? None for me. Thank you. None. Thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Great. The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number four, Servia LLC, doing business as Servia, located at 126 State Street, holder of a common vigiler seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Derek Alton to Ann Patrizzi Chambers, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Oh, Ms. Chambers, you are muted. I'm gonna ask you to unmute right now. My apologies, better? Better, yes. we can hear you. Um, this is Anna Patrizia Chambers. I'm the general manager of Serbia Restaurant, uh, 126 Day Street. Great, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, do you uh, wanna go through the Questions for manager yes. uh, Ms. Chambers, um, these, these are the questions we ask any manager of record that comes before the board. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, over 20 years. Okay. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Kern? None for me, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other, other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number five, 86 Mass Ave Wild Duck Inc. doing business as Wild Duck located at 86 Massachusetts Ave, holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to pledge the license and inventory to Rockland Trust Company. Uh, attorney John Moradian, uh, uh, who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, attorney John Moradian, Democus Law Offices here on behalf of um, 86 Mass Ave Wild Duck. 
Um, just simply asking for a pledge of the license and in inventory to Lockland Trust Company. Um, uh, just it, they recently got this license and are just doing some financing with it. So that's a, that's the request. Okay. Um, can you get into any more specifics about the reason of the pledge? Uh, I think it's just more of acquisition costs and um, um, inventory costs to okay. start the business up. Okay. It wasn't pledged when they applied for the license. All right, thank you. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. I don't, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number six, flagship restaurant group LLC doing business as Forcella, located at 33 North Square. Holder of a common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to pledge the license to John Paolo Calda Claudina, uh, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Brian Gazda again on behalf of the licensee Forcella. With me on the call this morning is Shannon McGowan. Um, I believe she might be showing up on the screen as Nino Trotta. Um, by way of background, this is just a simple pledge of license to secure a loan agreement that was entered into by the company for $300,000 to basically consolidate debts um, and pay down obligations of the company. So this is just um, security for that note. Okay, um, I have no questions. Commissioner Saxon, <clears throat> Commissioner Karn? I don't, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number seven, Boston Liquor Group Inc. doing business as the Liquor and Wine Emporium located at 336 K Street in South Boston, the holder of a retail package store all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to pledge the license stock inventory to Middlesex Federal Savings Bank. Attorney Nelson Chang. Uh, Attorney Chang? Yep. Uh, for the record, Attorney Nelson Chang representing a petitioner with offices at 27 Jackson Street in Saugus, Mass. We are seeking pledge of license and maturing stock to Middlesex Federal Savings Bank. The principal purpose is to refinance for a more favorable rate. And also a certain amount will then be going potentially into increasing inventory and also uh, improving some improvements to the uh, premises. With okay. me, also is Nicola Sharman, who is the corporate principal. Thank you, Attorney Chang. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran? I don't, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Uh, item number eight, Boston Liquor Group 2, Inc., doing business as East Side Market, located at 474 East 8th Street in South Boston. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the DBA of the license business from East Side Market to Southie Wine and Spirits. And secondly, has petitioned to pledge the license inventory stock to Middlesex Federal Savings Bank. Attorney Nelson Chang. Attorney Chang. Again, Attorney Nelson Chang with offices at 47 Jackson Street in Saugus, representing the petitioner. With me again is Kinzilla Sharman, who is the court principal. The pleasure of license is essentially the same as for the last one that we are refinancing for the purpose of lowering the rate and also potentially to put a few funds into inventory and some improvements. Uh, the second matter is to change the DBA from Eastside Market to Southie Wine Spirits which the feeling is that it's more appropriate for the uh, name for the particular neighborhood that we service. Thank you for that explanation. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran. None for me, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number nine, Sui Shia Inc. Blake located at two Tyler Street. Holder of a common Victor seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to change the DBA of the license business to Waku Waku. 
who is present on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, Secretary Green. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ryan Cost on behalf of the licensee. With me this morning is the manager of record and owner, Henry Wong. This is an application to change the DBA of restaurant Sushaya on Tyler Street. Um, there'll be a light change in concept and a few upgrades made to the space going from focus on small plates over to focus on ramen. Other than this um, and the change of name, of course, to Waku Waku, there are no other operational changes proposed um, and everything will otherwise be remaining the same. Thank you very much. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. None, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 10, Boston in 4 LLC, doing business as McGreevy's, located at 911 Boylston Street. Holder of a common vigiler, seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the DBA of the license business from McGreevy's to AT O'Keefe's. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Andrew Upton for the applicant from Upton, Connell, and Devlin at 112 Water Street. Uh, we propose only a name change today uh, from McGreevy's to AT O'Keefe's. Uh, no other changes to any aspect of the operation. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. I don't either, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Great, seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling item number 11, Haley House Inc. doing business as Haley House Bakery Cafe located at 12 Gage Street in Roxbury. Holder of a common vigiler, restricted seven day wines and malt beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, I am Bing Broderick from Haley House, uh, rep, uh, doing business as Haley House Bakery Cafe, 12 Dade Street, Roxbury. Um, and we've, uh, you know, we're a nonprofit that holds the license to our board members have changed, we're just changing the officers. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. I have no questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran? None, thank you. Questions, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 12, SIP Wine Bar and Kitchen, Inc., located at 571 to 581 Washington Street. Holder of a common vigiler, seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager, and secondly, has petitioned for a change of stock and ownership interest. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, this is Brad Delbeck, 597 Main Street, Stoneham, Massachusetts. And Christopher Damien, 1 Franklin Street, Boston, Mass. Okay, Mr. Dalbeck, Mr. Damien, um, can you let us know about the changes you are proposing? Yeah, this is just a simple, uh, since inception, uh, Christopher Damien and Bradford Dalbeck have been 50% owners. Uh, I'm actually retiring, so we're turning over 100% of the uh, ownership to Christopher Damien, who is actually the current manager of record. So uh, the only changes are the ownership. Great. Thank you for uh, explaining that. Thank you. Congratulations on your retirement. I don't have any uh, questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. None for me, thank you. Yes, he will you. Okay, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Okay. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 13, Cork and Tip Tavern, Inc. doing business as Tavern at the End of the World, located at 108 Cambridge Street in Charlestown. Holder of a common vigiler, seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC manager. Secondly, has petitioned for a change of stock ownership interest. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, I am Samuel Dorfman, attorney for William O'Brien. Um, I am uh, appearing on behalf of Cork and Tip Tavern Inc. doing business as Tavern at the End of the World. 
Um, this is just to um, remedy a proposed transfer that did not occur, um, an appointment that did not occur. Uh, and I have submitted an affidavit signed by both parties involved stating as such and why it did not occur. And this is just to rectify the licenses records to show that uh, William O'Brien remains the sole shareholder and member and manager of the company. Okay. Um, all right, I don't have any questions at this time. None for me. None for me either, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Calling item number 14, Cork and Tip Tavern, Inc. doing business as Tavern at the End of the World, located at 108 Cambridge Street in Charlestown. Holder of a common vigiler seven-day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from rear entrance for stock, two rooms and kitchen on first floor, capacity seven, seller for stock, two rear entrance for stock, two rooms and kitchen on first floor, capacity 70 inside, seller for stock, outdoor patio on private property, 1,593 square feet with 50 seats, Patio hours will be from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. for the months of March, March through November. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Elizabeth Pisano from Upton, Connell, and Devlin, counsel for the applicant tavern at the end of the world. With me this morning is the owner, William O'Brien. Uh, the applicant is seeking a permanent outdoor patio. The restaurant had a temporary patio last year during COVID and it was a major success for business and the neighbors absolutely loved it. Um, we're proposing 50 seats with 11 p.m. closing hour, which is what they had last year. Um, we held an abutters meeting on Monday night and we haven't received any objections. And we received nearly 50 uh, signatures of neighbors in support of this patio. Um, and if the board has any questions, we're happy to answer. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to hear it has been a success the last two years and to see um, this application for a permanent one. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, Commissioner Saxon, or Commissioner Curran? No questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Um, yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Caitlin Stephenson with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, all abutters were fired and our office did hold an abutters meeting on February 28th. The meeting had no attendees, but I did receive 45 signatures of support. So at this time, our office would like to defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Okay. Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 15, Lolita Boston LLC, doing business as Lolita Cocina and Tequila Bar, located at 271 Dartmouth Street. Holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from entrance from lobby, side entrance from alley for stock in two rooms and kitchen on first floor, two stock rooms and basement, an outdoor seasonal patio from April through October for 10 patrons, capacity 12 at bar stools, 146 at tables and chairs, 85 standing to 8,310 square feet on first floor, main entrance exit on Dartmouth Street, three main dining rooms, seating capacity of 233, with eight dining areas, one main bar and two additional side bars, kitchen and offices in rear, stock rooms and basement, seasonal outdoor patio on public property from April to October, 11 p.m. closing hour, additional exits and alley and on the corner of Dartmouth and Newbury Streets. Attorney Kristen Scanlon, Attorney Scanlon. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee. Uh, I believe signed on with us this morning are the two owners of Lolita Back Bay, Chris Jameson and Mark Malatesta. The application before you, um, as the legal ad indicated, is for an alteration of premises in order to expand into adjacent vacant space to their existing premises. Uh, this particular expansion has been in the works for over three years now. The licensee is investing a significant amount of funding to undertake capital improvements in the space, including a rebuild of the entire ceiling uh, with a heavy emphasis on sound attenuation improvements in order to reduce the acoustic transmission from the space. 
Uh, starting back in 2019, the licensee conducted community outreach with the Neighbor Neighborhood Association of Back Bay, the Back Bay Association, and the Abutting Condo Association regarding their plans for uh, these expansions and improvements, all of whom ultimately supported or did not oppose the endeavor. Uh, with the expansion, the square footage will increase by approximately 2,000 square feet from 6,300 square feet to 8,300 square feet, seating from 158 to 233, and occupancy from 243 to 365. Uh, all other operational details remain the same at the site, and their anticipated reopening is within the next two to three months. <clears throat> Attorney um, Scanlon, did they complete the, the public process for the um, outdoor patio on the public property? The outdoor patio is existing at that site. Um, it was oh, already it is. okay. Site. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. I don't have any questions at this time, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curry. And then for me, thank you. At this time, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services, um, we'd like to defer the vote to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 16, Big Night Venues, Boston 5 LLC, located at 186 Tremont Street, holder of a common vigiler seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from approximately 7,562 square feet in three rooms on first floor with seating and dining room, library room, cafe space, bar area, and private dining room with seating for 266, 2,000 square feet of basement level storage space, main entrance exit on Tremont Street with emergency exits on Boylston Street side and in rear of premises, 295 square feet seasonal outdoor patio with seating for 24 on public property from April to October, indoor closing hour 2 a.m., outside closing hour 11 p.m to approximately total square feet of 7,562 in two rooms on first floor, seating in main dining room, bar and library room, bar in each of the main dining room and library room, 2,000 square feet in basement for storage and office, kitchen and rear, main entrance exit on Tremont Street, additional exits on Boylston Street and in rear of premises, 295 square feet patio on public property, seating for 24 April to October, 11 p.m. outdoor closing. Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Morning again, Madam Chair, members of the, <clears throat> excuse me, member, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee. Uh, this alteration of premises application is associated with the previous DBA change that was heard by the board in December regarding the change of the restaurant's concept at this location from Explorator to Guy's Kitchen and Bar. As you may recall, we had indicated that at that time that this application would be forthcoming due to updates and permits from ISD regarding the slight reconfiguration and removal of the front um, coffee bar cafe that was previously located in the front of this restaurant. So the main changes to the floor plan are a change of rooms from three to two, accommodating a more open layout and adjustment in seating from 224 to 274 and occupancy from 266 to 289. Uh, the licensee did meet with the neighborhood association in the fall regarding these changes and no other changes to operations are proposed. Okay, thanks very much. Um, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? No questions, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number 17, 255 Newberry Inc. doing business as Taqueria Urban Kitchen located at 255 Newberry Street. Holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from 1100 square feet interior on basement level of 255 Newberry Street with 400 square feet outdoor annual weather permitting patio on private property closing hour 10 p.m kitchen storage and bathrooms located in rear of restaurant, two means of egress, one on the front of the restaurant and one in rear, to 2,350 square feet interior on basement levels of 255 and 253 Newbury Street, indoor seating capacity of 46, 
with 400 square foot outdoor annual weather permitting patio on private property closing hour 10 p.m. Kitchen storage and bathrooms located in rear of restaurant, four means of egress, two in the front of restaurant and two in the rear. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Madam Chair and the board, Elizabeth Pisano from Upton, Connell and Devlin, counsel for the applicant. With me this morning is Alan Rodriguez, the owner of Moneta. The applicant is seeking to extend the premise to the adjacent space in 253 Newbury Street, which is about 1,200 square feet. The restaurant has been a great success and they've been really busy. Um, there is a public need for this expansion as they're um, typically experiencing long wait lists for tables and they want to be able to accommodate more guests and minimize wait times, um, which this expansion would allow for them to increase the indoor seating capacity to 46 from 23. Uh, the owner, um, Alan, he met with the Back Bay Neighborhood Association on December 6th and received their support and all other operations will remain the same. Uh, they have the same closing hour, same staff, same concept, um, everything else will, will remain the same. Okay, thank you. Um, I have no questions. <clears throat> Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curry? None for me, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, yes, the applicant met with the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay received their non-opposition. Our office has received no emails, letters, testimony of opposition or support regarding this proposal. So our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 18, Beacon Hill Pub, LLC, doing business as Beacon Hill Pub, located at 149 Charles Street, holder of a general on-premise all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license business from the above to 149 Charles Pub, LLC, doing business as Charles Street Pub at the same location. Chaz Fisher, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Good afternoon, uh, uh, board. This is uh, attorney Chaz Fisher. I'm also joined uh, with uh, Carolyn Conway. Right, attorney Conway, are you with us? Oh, we see you, right. Yes, there we are. And I believe uh, Ty Gupta is with us as well, who is the 100% owner of the premises. Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. Great, thank you. Attorney Conway, do you wanna present the uh, proposal? Sure, this is um, uh, uh, where Mr. Gupta and his related entities have purchased the building and also purchased the business of the Beacon Hill Pub. So we're transferring it over to uh, Mr. Fishers uh, is going to be the manager of the record to the 149 Charles LLC uh, uh, at, at the Beacon Hill Pub. And we anticipate that after we do construction on the premises that we will be looking for a new tenant to go in to uh, either purchase the business or operate the, operate the pub. But right now we're looking to go in, totally rehab and, um, and then look forward to the future. Mr. F Fisher, who's also the, att the attorney, has um, experience in the alcohol industry and he is coming on as manager he is a citizen, he is a resident of the Commonwealth, and he is familiar with the rules and regulations of the Boston Licensing Board. So basically what we're doing, we're transferring the ownership over there. As I said, we'll be doing um, construction and we plan on being back to the board with a fleshed out concept and uh, with exactly how it's going to operate. We expect it to be a lot more, a lot more upscale than it was before. Thank you, Attorney Conway, and uh, thank you for joining us, um, Attorney Fisher. We do have four questions to ask of any manager of record that's before the board. And in general, do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I grew up in the uh, industry. Uh, my family's owned uh, several restaurants uh, here in Boston. Uh, I was a part of the team that opened up uh, Kinsale 
back in 1998 with the Sachs Group. Uh, from there, I've worked uh, uh, not only with my clients, but with others uh, in the restaurant industry. Uh, I've also worked with uh, Chris Rossius uh, over at, uh, over at uh, the, uh, it's now closed. It's a restaurant that was over in um, the Dorchester area. And that was uh, then transferred over. Uh, Chris and I worked with to open up the restaurant in Woburn, uh, which was Sunrise Cafe uh, with our supervisor, George Delagenitas. Okay, um, thank you very much. The one, in, the one in Dorchester, the one in Dorchester was Fairmount, Fairmount Grill. High Park? Uh, yes. High Park, okay. Right there next to the train station. Okay, um, all right, thank you. Um, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? No questions, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. We thank the board for its time. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Calling item number 19, LSFW LLC, doing business as LTK Bar and Kitchen, located at 225 Northern Ave. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to CMG 225 Northern Ave LLC at the same location. Mark Malatesta, manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. Secondly, has petitioned to change the description of the license premise from in two rooms on the ground floor, kitchen and storage in the rear, and to include outdoor seasonal dining from April through October for 32 patrons on private property to 5,368 square feet in two rooms, one main room on ground floor with main dining area and bar seating with an additional room for private dining, 1,488 square foot kitchen and storage in rear, one main entrance exit, five additional emergency exits. Third has asked for removal of current license conditions, which include patio conditions, alcoholic beverages to be served only in conjunction with meals, to be staffed at all times, patio hours, Monday through Sunday, 2 a.m. closing hour, 10 a.m. opening on Sundays for alcohol service with brunch. And lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to Seaport Realty Company, LLC, Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon representing the applicant, signed on with us this morning are Chris Jameson and Mark Malatesta, owners of this concept. And Mark is also the proposed manager of record who's been previously approved by this board and the commission. Uh, this application is for a transfer of a license at the same location at 225 Northern Ave, which is the former LTK space, which has now been vacant for quite some time, uh, making way for a new Chinese inspired noodle and dumpling bar and full service sure. restaurant concept, which will be open for lunch and dinner seven days a week. Um, by way of background, the owners are award-winning, experienced operators who currently operate other restaurant establishments in Back Bay, which you heard uh, earlier this morning, Post Office Square, Fort Point, and Downtown Crossing, providing quality and consistency of food and beverage service and hospitality in the city of Boston. Uh, this particular restaurant that they plan to open in Seaport will be one of the new anchor tenants of the Park Lane building, adding a new and unique concept to the neighborhood and will also be reactivating this corner of Seaport that has sat vacant for quite some time. As part of the build out of the restaurant, the applicant plans to incorporate the previous tenants patio seating and encompass it all into interior space, which is the reason for the request of the removal of patio conditions from the previous um, license as part of the application. So there will effectively be no uh, outdoor seating at this location any longer. Um, as far as logistics are concerned, the square footage of the restaurant is approximately 5,400 5, square feet. Um, proposed seating for 203 and a total occupancy of 240 with hours daily from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, lastly, the applicant seeks a pledge to Seaport Realty Company regarding a loan made by this entity to the applicant entity related to the liquor license that's the subject of this transaction. Uh, lastly, they do anticipate a fall opening of this year and we're happy to answer any questions that the board might have at this time. Okay, thank you. I think you outlined it very clearly. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran? Uh, I don't either, thank you. Not this time, thank you. Great, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. I'm elected to defer to the board, thank you. 
Great. Thank Good you, Lily. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ana Calderon from Council President Flint's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see a hand raised from Sarah McCammond. You may unmute. Go ahead. Uh, good morning, Sarah McCammond, um, a resident of uh, Fort Point on the South Boston waterfront. Um, just would like to encourage that the fact that this is a new entity going into this space, that um, the restaurant um, have a meeting with uh, the neighborhood just to discuss their new concept and any um, changes in, um, in, in, in operations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Can I just ask Sarah, uh, what group are you from? Um, Four Point Neighborhood Association, FPNA. We cover the South Boston waterfront. Great. Thank you. Uh, are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 20, 49 Melcher Street Restaurant Group, LLC, doing business as Moo, located at 49 Melcher Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Melcher New Co. Holdings, LLC, doing business as Moo Seaport at the same location. Courtney Hills Manager, 2 a.m. closing hour. Secondly, has petitioned to pledge the license to Bank Newport. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Thank you, Secretary Green. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Ryan Gosd on behalf of the applicant. With me this morning is Courtney Hills, who is the manager of record, as well as Mark D'Alessandro, who is the VP of restaurant operations. <clears throat> um, this is an application seeking to transfer ownership of the existing all alcohol license at this site, which is the site of the former Bastille Kitchen restaurant, which shut down previously. Um, as the board might be aware, we previously became, we came before the board about a year ago on a change of DBA concept and change of manager of record to rebrand the, the space and prepare it for reopening as a high-end steakhouse, um, doing business as Move Seaport. Um, in anticipation of reopening under this new concept, we now seek to transfer ownership of the license to the new holding company, if you will, for the new venture between the new partner coming in. Um, this will be operated in conjunction with the sister restaurant, <coughs> excuse me, Be uh, Moo and Beacon Health. Um, so this will be a sister restaurant in a seaport in Fort Point neighborhood. Um, other than the change in ownership, if you will, at this juncture, um, there are no other changes proposed. Um, the hours of operation will be remaining the same, as well as the manager of record, which is Courtney Hills. So she is approved manager of record at this location specifically. Um, lastly, with respect to a pledge of license, that's noted in the application. This is simply to memorialize that the license as it's being transferred to the new holding company will be coming subject to the existing pledge that's already on the license. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I missed the end. What was the reason for the pledge? So the former entity that is transferring the license entered into a loan agreement with Bank Newport about, I think five or six years ago um, to basically do some of the build out and buy some equipment within the restaurant. So okay. those, those note obligations are being assumed by the new company. So the pledge will be coming with it. Thank you, Attorney Gosta. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon. No questions for me, thank you. No questions, thank you. And Attorney Gosta, just to clarify, you said that Ms. Hills is already an approved manager of record by this board? She is, correct. Great, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there morning, any other? Oh, sorry. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Spink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hang on. I do see a hand raised uh, once again from Sarah McCammond. Uh, you may unmute yourself. Uh, thank you so much, um, Commission. Again, Sarah McCammon, um, part of FPNA, the Neighborhood Association, covering um, this uh, um, applicant and proponent. And we are actually in discussions um, in regards to their branding strategy. Um, this location um, and the prior restaurant, as um, mentioned, is right in the heart of the very iconic and um, idea uh, four point 
historic landmark district. And um, we are in conversations with them in regards to um, their branding of the restaurant as Moose Seaport versus Fort Point. Seaport um, is geographically a few streets away and um, it is really important to the character and to the neighborhood as was brought up at um, our January FPNA meeting that the restaurant reflect the neighborhood in which they're situated. Um, so from a branding perspective, we're not requesting that any legal um, paperwork be changed, but we are looking to work with the applicant to reflect the restaurant, their host neighborhood, and to respect um, our character and the community's request. Um, so um, we would love to have further dialogue with them and um, would um, respectfully request that um, the uh, voting be delayed in order for the neighborhood to have greater conversations with the restaurant. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I'm just going to jump in here. This is a business transaction. They're pledging the license to, to help, you know, open the business, build it out. Talking about branding and names, I think that's a conversation that the Neighborhood Association can continue um, with the restaurant. It sounds like they've been cooperative in the past and it will continue to be, but I would not want to hold business uh, transactions are moving forward because there's a discussion going on about branding and naming at this point. Um, this transferring a license and pledging a license has become a lifeline for some of these restaurants in the last two years during COVID. Today, I think we've had five or six. It's very important to the board and to me as chairman to see that business is not stalled um, over something that the neighborhood and the licensee are trying to work out. So I will not defer this vote, um, but I encourage the licensee to continue speaking. Um, with the neighborhood association on this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCain. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? All right. The board will take this under advisement as well. Oh, Mr. Del Delsandro, did you unmute yourself? To oh, speak? I just wanted to say thank you. That's all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Calling item number 21, Nancy's Inc. doing business as R2s on Charles Street, located at 89 Charles Street. Holder of a common habitual or seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to transfer the license and location from the above to Broken Records Beer Hall LLC doing business as Broken Records Beer Hall located at 81 to 85 Guest Street. The premises consist of in one large room on ground floor with bar and dining seating, seating capacity of 140 and game areas, restrooms, kitchen, storage and office in rear, 6,000 square feet total. Closing hour 2 a.m. Thomas Shea, manager, Lastly, is petition for a management agreement between Broken Records Beer Hall LLC and Guest Street Hospitality Inc. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning, uh, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thank you very much for having us this morning. With me is uh, Jim Halliday, uh, the executive in charge for New Balance of this project, uh, as well as Tom Shea, our proposed manager of record. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain Tom is an approved manager by this board. He's a uh, one of the executives of the Briar Group, which owned numerous restaurants in and around the city. Um, the application is uh, a continuation of the very exciting uh, renovation and build out of the entire New Balance campus at this location. Uh, the board is, is, I'm sure, aware that uh, uh, previous applications here include Rail Stop Restaurant, um, the um, flat, Flatbread Pizza. There's also that this is the home of the Celtics uh, training facility, the Bruins training facility, a new track facility, which will be uh, actually in this uh, same location, and the very exciting Roadrunner Music Hall, which is uh, set to open uh, hopefully sometime later this month. So this um, restaurant application is meant to uh, fill in, uh, if you will, and, and, and be um, uh, work together with these other entities that are out there to bring more activity and uh, life to the surrounding area. We have been, I think, fully vetted in the community. We attended a meeting of the Brighton Austin Improvement Association back in November. Um, I know the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services was represented at that meeting and our inquiries afterwards uh, were that we did not have to do an abutters meeting uh, given that we received a, a support supportive vote from the BAIA on that evening. The uh, property owners, the New Balance team has had longstanding relationships with the local elected officials, um, and we uh, believe we are here before you fully supported uh, for this hopefully exciting new concept to open. 
And if I was wrong about Mr. Shea, he certainly is a citizen, has experience, uh, et cetera, and can easily answer your questions. Yeah, Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, That's okay. Correct. I just don't see him yet. He's on, he's on. Maybe he's, my screen, maybe he's on a different page. He's waving. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I do believe you are an approved manager of record, and your attorney did outline your experience, and um, I think we have that covered. Um, when do you expect to open? As With any as luck, I mean, I'm approved. hoping to be able to uh, literally hand deliver if we get a positive vote, uh, the documentation to the ABCC. They literally, the music hall is slated to open in two or three weeks. Okay. Jim, if you're, is that about yeah, right? Yeah, that's correct. I think they have their first show uh, scheduled for March 10th. Um, and then they get pretty active from the uh, 15th on. We are, uh, we are getting our certificate of occupancy for the track venue. Um, we've got some uh, 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 onboarding we've got to do, um, but we get very active in April with uh, with activity there, which um, you know includes uh, includes a lot of daytime uh, camp programs for the Celtics. Uh, uh, the running events for the track start up in December, but during the uh, non-track season, which is December to March. We are programmed out with, um, get the ability to do court surfaces, turf surfaces. And so we're programmed out to users on the basketball front. Um, uh, and we've even got agreements with Boston Ski and Sports to have adult evening uh, recreation, uh, I think Monday through Thursday, starting uh, middle of April. So. It's exciting to see that activation yeah, and that it really is. Um, yeah. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. No questions, thank you. Yeah. Great, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, you know, this has been a, a long community process uh, regarding the arrival of uh, Roadrunner and, and the track house to the to the Brighton neighborhood. Um, you know, the applicants work closely with a number of civic associations and, and abutters. The mayor's office held a, an abutters meeting many years ago. People have been expecting this, anticipating this, and looking forward um, to to the arrival of uh, of this liquor license to kind of fill out that corner um, and really activate the space. So. Um, you know, we defer to the board, but just want to give that background information. Thank you. Thank you, Connor. Thank you for that. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I do see a raised hand from Annabella. You may go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, members of the board, my name is Annabella Gomes, uh, zoning chair for the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. Also a member of the IAG for our Boston Landing. Uh, we'd like to go on record and support. Uh, this is consistent with the vision for Boston Landing and look forward to activating the street. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Calling item number 22, Aerist Boston Co. Inc. doing business as Aerist Boston located at 500 Logan Airport Terminal E in East Boston has applied for an airport club all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. Virgin Atlantic Club is located in Terminal E within Logan Airport. There are two entrances and exits within approximately 2,956 square feet club lounge. There is one level to the club. There is one bar on the premise. Alcohol will be stored within a locked cabinet in the storeroom, seating capacity 75. Manager Opon Kwan, closing time 2 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mohan Kapadwala, CT Liquor Permit Consultant, 164 East Center Street, Manchester, Connecticut. We were already introduced to Mr. Kwan. He's, a, he's a, on the Zoom call, but and Mr. Lee should be on the Zoom call as well. By way of background, Mr. Lee, who is the applicant, already has another liquor license at Logan Airport for Air France Lounge, as well as he runs other airport facilities at different cities across the country. Uh, Mr. Kwan is a U.S. citizen. Mr. Kwan is a Massachusetts resident. He does understand 
the ABCC regulations pertaining to handling and servicing of alcohol, and he does have experience in the food industry. Uh, what we have applied for is obviously the club license, as well as a common victuliar license for food. We would request that a CV temporary license be issued as part of this proceedings while ABCC uh, moves forward and processes the application for the liquor. Uh, I've already done the abutters notice. I have the green card from our notice to the abutters. In this case, we had to send it to Massachusetts Port Authority to whom we did send it to, and we got their green card. As for the CV license, since there was already an existing CV license at these, these premises, and there was a previous liquor license at these premises. Okay. And if there's any further questions that the board has for myself, Mr. Lee, or Mr. Kwan, we're, at your, we're available for you. Okay, thank you. That was a very thorough explanation. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon? None for me either. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one clarifying question, Mr. Cavadwell. I don't see the common victualer application in front of us today. Um, have you submitted that through with our office? Yes, sir. It was sent through uh, Mr. Kwok at your office. So he has all the documents, including all the personal information and the supporting documents. And right. as I said earlier, we would request a temporary CV so they can at least start the food portion while we await the uh, ABCC process. Okay, thank you for that explanation. I, Are there, do you have Wait, one, one more question? Go ahead, Commissioner Curran. I'm sorry. Um, is it gonna be doing business as Ares Boston or Virgin Atlantic Club? Virgin Atlantic Lounge, yes. Okay, we have the DBA on the notice. I don't know what the paperwork says, but it says Aris Boston. Well, the name of the company is Aris Boston. Yeah. So we, we want, I think we want to make sure we have the right DBA as well. The, the DBA would be Aris Boston. That is correct. No, D, DBA is what, what's like on the business, public facing, correct? Right. So that would be Virgin Atlantic Club. Correct. But, but again, just for, as a point of clarification, the, the name of the company and the DBA is Aris Boston, although the space is allocated to Virgin Atlantic Club. Okay. Oh. Got Sir, it. does that require a management agreement or something? It does not. That was one of the first, earlier questions that I did. Uh, address with my clients and to go through exactly what is it that, how is it structured? It does not require a management agreement. That was definitely something I had thought about and I addressed it with my clients because they're the ones that are operating, running, and are responsible for the company and, and, and the running of operations at that location. Any further questions from the board? Up for me. Thank you. Are there any individuals? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope I was able to answer your question, sir. Does that answer your question about the DBA issue? Because it was something that we dealt with early on in this process. I want to make sure we are all clear. If there's any additional information or any additional question that I may be answered, I'd be more than happy to. Okay, we'll, we'll double check. If we have any questions, we'll follow up. Thank you. Thank you. Are there yeah. any individuals who would like to testify on this matter? beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much, members of the board. Thank you. Calling item number 23, Kerpa Baba D. Inc. doing business as Bukhara Indian Bistro located at 3698 Washington Street in Jamaica Plain has applied for a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above on two floors with first floor approximately 1,250 square feet, consisting of dining room and bar seating capacity 51, kitchen and two restrooms, basement level consisting of prep area, coolers, utility room, office, storage, and staff restroom. Hours of operation are seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Manager Manraj Pabla, closing time 11 p.m. Uh, who is present on behalf of the applicant? Thank you, Secretary Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Marcy Costa, McDermott, Quilty and Miller, 28th State Street, on behalf of the applicant. We are in front of you today uh, representing our application for an all alcoholic, all alcoholic beverages license to be operated 
at Bukhara Indian Bistro. We previously presented to the board on August 8th of 2021, and the application was approved and sent to the ABCC pending availability of a license. Um, at that time, uh, we received notice in October that there were no licenses available. We are back in front of the board today, presenting the same application, no changes, same manager of record um, to um, have it um, looked at again by the board and um, hopefully uh, with the availability of a license at this time. Okay. Um, I have no questions since nothing has changed. Uh, Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran? None for me. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, speaking on behalf of my colleague, Tiffany Caballero. Um, just to reiterate, there wasn't a butters meeting for Bukhara Indian Bistro, and it was held on August 2nd, 2021, where several abutters and community members expressed support for the restaurant. Um, I would like to see the continued respect for the surrounding businesses and community with the addition of the new license. Um, prior to that meeting, the applicants met with the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council on July 6th, 2021, and they received support letters from the JPNC Washington Street Business Group, Forest Hills Liquor Market, and various neighbors and customers. Um, our office has received no letters or testimony in opposition of this proposal. Um, so we'll defer judgment to the board again at this time. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see a hand raised from Michael Reiskind. Uh, my name is Michael Reiskind. I live at 425 South Huntington Avenue in Jamaica Plain. I'm a member of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and the chair of its public service committee. Uh, we did have a hearing on this issue on July 6th and testified uh, before you urging you to pass this item in August of uh, 2021. Um, yes, Mr. Uh, uh, Pablo has been operating at this location for two years and we urge you to uh, pass this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reiskind. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter today? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you all. And those are all of the items before the board today. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.